The Cyclist, by Eric Rode, 1755. Read by, Sally Ronstadt. Continued. Chapter 7, Tomas. Scene 31, The Magic Bicycle and the Guilt and Confession. Among the cobblestone streets of the village, another young soul was captivated by Carlo's cycling prowess. This boy, with eyes full of admiration, was about 11 or 12 years old. His name was Tomas, and he saw Carlo as a hero who defied limits. One evening, under an overcast sky with clouds looming in the distance, a storm brewing, a night when darkness could easily shroud a walking figure in the umbrella of clouds. Nevertheless, the moon sporadically emerged, casting its beam of light like a flashlight. Tomas briskly made his way home, which was near the town center, he decided to take a shortcut through Carlo's land to ensure he wouldn't be late for dinner. As Tomas passed near Carlo's cottage, whispers of magic danced through the air, and curiosity got the best of him. The villagers, including those in Carlo's household, were all having dinner. The crescent moon illuminated Carlo's bicycle, which rested against a wall amidst passing stormy clouds. In the young boy's mind, that bicycle held a magical charm, a secret wellspring of Carlo's strength. With cautious steps, Tomas approached the bicycle. His small fingers traced its frame, and his imagination wove wild tales of how this bicycle could transform him into a hero, just like Carlo. Ignoring the voice of reason, Tomas assured himself, I will return it in a few minutes, glancing around. Then, with a swift motion, he mounted the bicycle and pedaled into the night his heart racing with exhilaration and innocence. The cobblestones whispered beneath Tomas's tires as he rode through the countryside. The night air caressed his face, and the distant echoes of nocturnal creatures serenaded his journey. He felt a rush of freedom and adventure, imagining himself as a hero, just like Carlo. Later, as the rain started to fall, Tomas decided to return the bike once the rain eased off a bit. He went home, and exhaustion took over as he fell asleep until the next morning. Days turned into weeks, and the story of Carlo's failed journey to save his grandfather became the town's sorrowful tale. Whispers lingered in the air, painting the incident with shades of tragedy and missed chances. Carlo, burdened by grief, continued his life with a heavy heart. One day, as the sun cast long shadows across the village square, Tomas found Carlo alone by the riverbank. The weight of guilt bore down on the young boy's shoulders, and with trembling lips, he confessed his secret. The truth tumbled out, revealing how his innocent curiosity had inadvertently robbed Carlo of the chance to bid farewell to his grandfather. Tomas's voice quivered as he recounted the night he rode Carlo's bicycle, believing in the magic it held. Tears welled in his eyes, and he apologized profusely for his unwitting role in the tragedy. Carlo's eyes softened as he listened, his heart recognizing the purity of Tomas's intentions. Carlo spoke, his voice gentle yet tinged with sadness, and said, Tomas, you were just a curious young boy. You didn't know the weight of the circumstances that night. It's not your fault. Tomas wiped away his tears, his eyes still brimming with remorse, but I took away your chance to say goodbye, he whispered. Carlo placed a comforting hand on Tomas's shoulder and replied, My chance to say goodbye to my grandfather may have been lost, but that doesn't mean I blame you. Life is filled with unexpected twists, and we must learn to carry the weight of our experiences, both the joyful and the sorrowful. You've shown great courage in admitting your actions, Tomas. Remember, it's not the bicycle that makes a hero, it's the heart. Tomas nodded, his heart lighter for having shared his burden with Carlo. In that moment, a bond formed between the seasoned cyclist and the young dreamer, one built on forgiveness, understanding, and the shared realization that heroes were not exempt from the complexities of life. Scene 32. A bond forged in secrets. Carlo, the seasoned cyclist who had faced challenges and triumphs, knelt before Tomas, his expression a canvas painted with understanding and compassion. The lines etched on his weathered face spoke of a life rich in experiences from moments of sheer joy to depths of profound sorrow. In this moment, Carlo made a decision that would not only shape Tomas's life but also leave an indelible mark on his own. His hand, calloused by years of gripping handlebars, landed gently on Tomas's small shoulder, 
a reassuring weight that conveyed more than words ever could. His voice, a soothing melody, broke the heavy silence. Tomas! Carlo's words flowed like a silent river, washing away the burden of guilt that weighed heavily on the young boy's heart. He continued to speak, we all make choices in life, sometimes without fully grasping their consequences. But remember, the past is not a place for blame. It's a place for learning and growth. You were curious, and curiosity is a beautiful thing. Tomas looked up at Carlo, his eyes wide with a mix of relief and gratitude. In that moment, the weight of guilt that had pressed upon his young shoulders began to lift, like a heavy fog dissipating under the morning sun. From that day onward, Carlo became more than just a cyclist. He became Tomas's silent mentor. Their bond deepened as Carlo shared the intricate art of cycling with the young boy, teaching him not only the mechanics of balance, speed, and endurance but also the values of discipline, determination, and resilience. Under Carlo's patient and watchful eye, Tomas's natural talent blossomed. His once uncertain pedaling grew steady and confident. He developed the strength not just in his legs but in his spirit. Learning that cycling was not merely about covering distances but about conquering the trials of life's winding paths. Their mentorship was a quiet, closely guarded secret, shielded from the prying eyes and gossipy tongues of the town. Carlo knew that revealing the truth about Tomas's innocent role in his past tragedy would invite unnecessary judgment upon the young boy, something he was determined to spare him from. One sunny afternoon, as they rested by the riverbank, the golden rays of the sun stretching long shadows across the ground, Carlo spoke with warmth in his voice. Tomas, you possess a gift that goes beyond cycling. Your determination and spirit remind me of my own youth. Tomas's face lit up with pride at Carlo's words, his heart swelling with a profound sense of belonging and purpose. He replied earnestly, Thank you, Carlo. I want to be as skilled as you one day. Carlo chuckled warmly, a sound that resonated with both approval and affection, and replied, Tomas, you already have the heart of a true cyclist. With time, practice, and unwavering determination, your skills will match the greatness of your spirit. And so, their clandestine mentorship continued, hidden beneath the surface of the village's daily life but thriving in the shared moments of guidance and growth. In Tomas's eyes, Carlo was not just a hero on a bicycle. He was a hero of the heart. Teaching him that even in the face of adversity, one could find the strength to forgive, to learn, and to pedal forward with unwavering resilience. Scene 33. From a small town to European glory. As time flowed onward, Tomas's fascination with the bicycle transformed into an unassailable talent. He no longer confined himself to the cobblestone streets of their village but ventured further afield, entering regional cycling competitions that left spectators in awe. The villagers, who had once watched Tomas wobble on two wheels, now marveled at the young man who pushed boundaries and achieved new heights. Yet, Tomas's journey didn't culminate within the village's borders. It was merely a stepping stone to something far more grandiose. He embarked on a path that led him to the illustrious stage of European cycling competitions. Guided by Carlo's sage wisdom and nurtured by the silent bond they shared, Tomas overcame every challenge with unyielding determination, ultimately emerging as the Italian cycling champion. The village, once a place where whispers of magic and tragedy hung heavily in the air, was now filled with a resounding chorus of pride. Carlo, the seasoned cyclist who had pedaled through life's tempests, and Tomas, the once curious boy who had grown into a cycling sensation, stood as living symbols of unity and triumph. Their shared journey, built on hidden truths and mentorship, stood as a powerful testimony to the resilience of the human spirit, the boundless well of compassion, and the enduring strength of connections that transcended even the darkest of secrets. One crisp morning, they stood by the river, the place where their mentorship had quietly blossomed. Carlo's weathered face, lined with experiences that spoke of both joy and sorrow, radiated a sense of profound pride. Tomas, he began, his voice a soothing balm to the young man's heart, you've not only become a true cycling champion but a champion in life itself. Your journey is an attestation to what one can achieve with determination and heart. Tomas couldn't help but grin his Italian cycling championship trophy glinting in the brilliant sunlight. He replied, I owe it all to you, 
Carlo. You taught me that even when life throws you off balance, you can find your way back on track. Carlo's eyes twinkled with pride and wisdom. He added, Always remember, it's not just about the races you win, but the lives you touch along the way. Keep pedaling, my boy, and may your wheels carry you to even greater heights. Their words, spoken beside the glistening river, echoed into the distance, serving as a monument to the enduring bond between mentor and mentee, between a seasoned cyclist and a rising star. Scene 34. The Race. Carlo returned to town and left Tomas sitting by the river. As Tomas sat by the tranquil river, gazing at his Italian championship trophy, he found himself immersed in a flashback memory of his rigorous training journey, which had set the stage for his eventual triumph. Those early mornings, etched in stone, became the foundation of his cycling prowess. Training began at 4 a.m., before the fields demanded their attention. With only one bike between them, Carlo and Tomas crafted a unique routine. Tomas, to himself, said, every dawn, every pedal stroke, it counted. Carlo, the mentor and father figure, picked up Tomas each day. Together, they embarked on different routes, navigating varying elevations. Tomas jogged alongside Carlo's cycling, pushing himself to the limits. Carlo, encouraging, told Tomas, you've got the heart of a champion, Tomas. Months of dedicated training passed, and Carlo decided it was time for Tomas to test his medal in the school's monthly bike race. Most competitors were older, but Tomas was undeterred. Tomas, determined, replied, I'll give it my all, Carlo. In his debut race, Tomas secured a remarkable third-place finish, igniting a spark of hope and determination. Months rolled on, and Tomas started outpacing older competitors in the monthly school races, much to Carlo's pride. Carlo, beaming with pride, said, You're making a name for yourself, Tomas. After a year of unwavering training, Carlo set his sights on a regional bike race. He not only imparted physical skills but also tactical tricks to outsmart opponents under the table. Tomas absorbed this knowledge eagerly. Tomas, curious, responded, Carlo, tell me more about these tactics. In his first regional competition, Tomas encountered adversity when he injured his ankle before the race. Nevertheless, he persevered, securing a commendable fifth-place finish. Tomas, gritting his teeth, talking to himself, said, I won't let anything stop me. Their training now had a clear objective, to conquer the Rome Cycling Championships. Tomas pushed himself to the limits, focusing on endurance and strength. Three years of relentless training passed. Tomas, reflecting, said to himself, I've come so far. Tomas underwent a significant physical transformation, gaining nearly two feet in height, which bolstered his physique for the challenges ahead. Tomas, feeling powerful, said, I've grown into this sport. The day of reckoning arrived as Tomas and his entourage boarded a train bound for Rome. They carried two bikes, along with spare tires and parts, ready to face the race that would test Tomas's mettle. Carlo, with anticipation, told Tomas, This is it, Tomas. The big day, the Rome Cycling Championships unfolded through the city streets and the surrounding countryside. Carlo strategically positioned boys from their village at various pit stops along the route. Carlo, planning, looking at Tomas, said, We've scouted every inch of this route, Tomas. Carlo, on a borrowed scooter, trailed Tomas, monitoring his progress closely. The atmosphere was electric, and Tomas was consumed by the enormity of the moment. Tomas, with determination, repeated to himself, This is what I've trained for. As the race commenced, Tomas started from the back, a calculated move due to his novice status. However, Carlo had devised a winning strategy. Carlo, with confidence, talking as if Tomas could hear him, said, Stay patient, Tomas. We've planned for this. Carlo's familiarity with the route, combined with Tomas's determination, proved to be their secret weapon. They navigated each turn and climb with precision. Tomas, focused, using his inner dialogue, said, I won't let anyone outsmart us. Tomas bided his time in the blistering midday sun, maintaining a consistent pace on the straightaways. He carefully avoided any cycling tricks, 
remembering Carlo's advice. Scene 35. The Climb. Carlo, reminding Tomas as if he was talking directly to him, said, Stay vigilant in those turns, Tomas. Gradually, Tomas made his move, steadily advancing through the ranks, never losing sight of the leaders. Tomas, mentally preparing, said, It's time to shine. The final, grueling uphill climb, Tomas's specialty, loomed ahead. He could barely make out the lead riders in the mist. Tomas, with determination, said, This is where I make my mark. Tomas entered a cycling trance, focusing solely on the finish line, his intuition guiding every pedal stroke. Tomas, in the zone, said, Nothing else matters now. He swiftly passed other riders, carefully navigating turns to avoid potential collisions. Fatigue began to claim the frontrunners. Tomas, pushing harder, said, I can do this. Carlo's voice echoed in Tomas's mind, reminding him to stay vigilant in the tricky turns where experienced riders often employed cunning tactics. Carlo, reiterating, said, Watch out for their tricks, Tomas. Gradually, Tomas began to make his move. He passed riders one by one, his determination unwavering. His eyes remained fixed on the leaders ahead, determined not to lose sight of them. Tomas, focused, reminding himself once more, said, I won't let them outsmart me. In the final moments of this Rome cycling championship, the atmosphere was charged with intense emotion and drama. Tomas, a 15-year-old cyclist, found himself in a situation that had captured the hearts of not just his local supporters of his hometown but the entire nation of Italy. As the race unfolded, it became increasingly clear that Tomas was the unlikely contender, the underdog who had managed to defy the odds and compete against more seasoned opponents. This created a compelling narrative that resonated deeply with the Italian people. Throughout the nation, from the bustling streets of northern cities to the tranquil coastal towns in the south, every Italian was glued to their seats, hanging on to every word from the radio announcer. The airwaves were buzzing with anticipation and excitement as they followed the race's every twist and turn. But what made this moment truly special was the collective outpouring of support for Tomas. The Italians weren't just spectators, they were emotionally invested in his journey. They could feel the young cyclist's determination and grit, and they saw in him a symbol of hope and resilience. As Tomas pedaled with all his might, the rising emotions were palpable. It was more than just a sporting event, it was a shared experience that brought an entire nation together. The cheers, prayers, and hopes of the Italian people were channeled through the airwaves, creating a wave of positive energy, as if God himself had joined the excitement, propelling Tomas forward. Scene 36, Final Minutes. In those final minutes, as the finish line drew near, the drama reached its peak. The nation held its collective breath, willing Tomas to cross that line and achieve the impossible. It was a moment that transcended sports, it was an attestation to the power of the human spirit and determination. As the race progressed, Tomas and the other cyclists amidst the final leg of the competition, the apex of the uphill climb. This was where Tomas truly excelled, thanks to years of training on hills. Tomas, with full commitment and determination, again said, This is where I shine. With every pedal stroke, he inched closer to the leading riders, who were now visible through the mist. Tomas, intensely focused, as if his consciousness was coaching him, said to himself, They're within reach. Tomas entered a zone, a state of complete concentration. His vision narrowed fixated solely on the finish line. Intuition guided his every move. With sheer determination, Tomas overtook the second rider, leaving him in his wake. Then, in a flash, realizing that the second rider was the previous European champion from France. Tomas, with fire in his eyes, said, It's just you and me now. And now, as he got a glimpse, the lead rider was from Holland, the current European champion. Now, Realizing with a flash, he was racing for Italy, not just for his hometown. The national pride came over him like a boost of pure energy directly sent from the divine. The final stretch became a heart-pounding duel. Tomas summoned his reserve of energy, unleashing a burst of speed in the closing moments. Tomas, with every ounce of strength, said, This is my time. In a breathtaking finish, Tomas surged ahead and claimed victory.
The spectators erupted in awe and disbelief. As Tomas crossed the finish line, it wasn't just a victory for him, it was a triumph for the entire nation. The emotional release was overwhelming as tears of joy flowed, and Italy celebrated not only a cycling champion but a symbol of resilience and the indomitable spirit that unites a people. A spectator from the crowd, amazed, yelled, Who is this young champion? Tomas, the youngest and a first-time competitor, had defeated seasoned cyclists and earned a standing ovation from all of Rome. Tomas, with tears of joy, while giving Carlo a hug, said, I did it, Carlo. That night, the triumphant duo returned to their hometown, greeted by a crowd that had been following the race through radio broadcasts. The anticipation for Tomas's future was palpable. Townsfolk, cheering, yelling, Tomas, our champion. The stage was set for Tomas to carry Italy's hopes as the new reigning European champion, poised to face the best riders from across the continent. Tomas, with determination, said, I won't let Italy down. This is just the beginning. Tomas's journey was an evidence to unwavering dedication, mentorship, and the pursuit of dreams that surpassed all expectations. Scene 37. Tragedy strikes again. Europe was bathed in the golden glow of hope and newfound prosperity. Tomas, now celebrated far and wide as a cycling champion, continued to chase his dreams with unwavering zeal. The very roads that had once served as his humble training ground were now his kingdom, each twist and turn echoing his storied legacy. On this particular fateful day, the sun hung high in the sky, casting long shadows across the picturesque countryside. Tomas, clad in his cycling attire, mounted his bicycle with the same unbridled enthusiasm that had always defined him. The wind, carrying the scent of blooming wildflowers, whispered promises of victory in his ears. The rolling hills, adorned with fields of vibrant green, seemed to bow in reverence to his remarkable skill. But fate, that capricious mistress of life's grand tapestry, had a different plan in store. As Tomas's bicycle sliced through the wind with the grace of a seasoned dancer, a sudden, piercing screech shattered the tranquility. An American-made car, its engine roaring with an almost arrogant confidence, careened into Tomas's path. The collision was swift and brutal, an agonizing dance of twisted metal and fragile flesh. Tomas, the young champion who had once conquered insurmountable challenges, now lay motionless, his life snuffed out in an instant. The bicycle, which had been his loyal steed through countless victories, lay mangled beside him. Amidst the chaos, a stunned and horrified hush descended upon the scene. The American tourist, dazed and disoriented, stumbled out of the car, a stark contrast to the vibrant and confident young cyclist whose journey had been so tragically cut short. The Cyclist, by Eric Rode, 1755. Read by, Sally Ronstadt.